Guys, while I was at E3, one of the most surprising games I was able to get my hands on was a little indie download called Bastion. It looks cute and unassuming at first, but it has an incredible dev team behind it, and I think you'll agree with me that it's seriously addictive. Affirmative. Bastion is brought to us by Supergiant Games, and did you know that the game is a finalist in the Independent Games Festival Awards? I didn't know that, Darren, but that's good news. Bastion follows the story of an adventurer known only to us as The Kid. Now here's a kid whose whole world got all twisted leaving him stranded on a rock in the sky. He gets up, sets off for the bastion, where everyone agreed to go in case of trouble. He must save his destroyed city from complete annihilation after the Calamity has split the land into a series of floating islands. The Bastion is the safe haven where you'll start to piece it all back together and navigate the hub world to retrieve powerful core crystals that will give you the energy to rebuild. The story narration begins from the moment you awake as the kid and continues to narrate every move you make from then on. This is really cleverly done and you become really attached to this disembodied voice who's dynamically describing every move you make, every heroic moment, lamenting your mistakes. And when I found this hammer and decided to spend a few gleeful moments just testing it out. Kid just rages for a while. It's unique, it's funny, I, I just loved it. You feel like you're essentially creating the story yourself through your own actions. Since the land has been torn apart, much of the terrain you'll be exploring forms itself as you go and occasionally crumbles away around you too. So part of the challenge is staying on solid ground and not hurtling to your doom. Quick and careful is the only way to go. It's an action RPG where you'll be levelling and gaining experience and finding sweet gear that you can customise and upgrade in structures that you build within the Bastion. I detected the influence of several different game genres. However, the narrative style is mostly reminiscent of old tabletop adventure games such as Dungeons and Dragons, where all the player's actions are described by the dungeon master. Well, the first thing that struck me was the art. I mean, it's just gorgeous with a really vibrant colour palette and cute but sophisticated character design. Plus, the way the path just kind of puzzle pieces together in front of you is really organic and fluid, sort of leading you off in various different directions and adventures. The kid will face a variety of enemies throughout his journey to restore his world, and this is where the game starts to get a bit arcade-like as they start popping up at every turn. You can carry up to three potions at a time, and you'll usually get at least one more chance to make a comeback when you die. Not by me, by a lunkhead. And lunkheads ain't fond of two-legged animals. Failing that, you'll restart the level, but each area is a, a short, fun burst of beastie bashing goodness, so it's not punishing. You'll quickly acquire a pretty sweet arsenal of both melee and ranged weapons, as well as a special move which you can use when you've got a, an ability potion to activate it. And I just love that you can chop and change these between worlds when you visit the Bastion. I could cater this to my playstyle. You know, the rapid fire bow is great for dispatching enemies from a distance because I don't like to get too close and those dueling pistols were great as well. And you'll also need to make good use of your dodge roll to avoid taking too much damage. You must be careful, however, as the dodge roll is fast and covers a lot of ground and the areas you'll be fighting in are quite small and the ground is often falling away from you. If you are careless with your rolling about, you may in fact roll your way off the edge. Lame. The kid can attack while on the move, but his attack power decreases when doing so. And if you stay still, you can charge for stronger attacks. Enemies are constantly hitting you with flames and projectiles, so staying still is tricky. There's a real skill to the combat, but at the same time, you have the opportunity to make the game as hard as you want it to be. The difficulty in the game is handled really interestingly. You'll meet gods throughout the game who will set challenges with greater rewards for choosing the more difficult option. The harder you make the game, the better the rewards will be, so there's good incentive to avoid the easy option. Kid don't need favours from the likes of Piv. On second thought, maybe he does. The Bastion becomes something you become quite proud of after a while as you build and expand and rescue survivors and bring them back to safety. Choosing which structures to build and the items that you store inside them all just adds to the freedom of customization that this game offers. Swapping and changing the potions in your distillery will decide which potions will be available to you out on the battlefield, and there's heaps to choose from. And each weapon changes how you approach all the combat as well. Mm -hmm. I just loved this blunderbuss, it has such a large area of effect, and when I first picked it up, I went nuts with it. It became my new favourite weapon, and the game picked up on that. Kids blasting everything in sight with that new musket. 
I guess my one regret is that there's no co-op. You know, I just kept wanting to show this game to my friends because it has such new and original ideas and when they came over we just have to take turns playing it. It would have been nice to be able to mash through, you know, in tandem, but I guess that would have added a whole extra layer of complication when it came to the narrator describing every move. Affirmative, Hex. The last recorded number of lines of narrative dialogue for Bastion was 3,000. To add further narration for additional players would have been no easy task. Yes, but if the game does well, perhaps multiplayer will be the next evolutionary step in a sequel. Final thoughts, Hex? You know, so many people came out of E3 just raving about this little download bar, Joe, and I think that's because it's one of the few games that actually brought something fresh and original to the table. You know, it's good arcade fun, but it's not button mashy or repetitive, and it's a visual feast. So I'm giving this one 8 out of 10. I had a great time with it and I found myself just wishing that my entire life was narrated too when I was doing things around the office. He felt a rumbling in his stomach. He opens the fridge. Ain't nothing in there but scraps. Looks like the kid's gonna go hungry tonight. I enjoyed building up my bastion and the great variety of weapons so I'm giving it 8 out of 10 rubber chickens as well. The kid gave the game the same score that Hex did. The kid didn't want to look like a noob in front of the spawnlings. Darren talked a lot and was annoying. The kid struggled with his comeback. Wit came hard for him. Snap. <laughs> the kid sulked.